everybody. Welcome to the Basis Points Podcast. I'm Kevin Flanagan, Head of Fixed Income Strategy at Wisdom Tree Asset Management. Is the Fed going to party like it's 1995? You know, one of the more noteworthy stories for the money and bond market so far in 2024 is the changing perception for the Fed policy outlook. You know, rate cuts obviously are now the primary focus, but the conversation has revolved around when such a move could occur and what would the path ultimately look like. And while Fed officials continue to acknowledge that rate cuts seem likely later this year, a more recent development in the news was the comparison to the rate cutting cycle that occurred in 1995-1996. And it was against this backdrop, I thought it would be interesting to provide you all with some context and outline of what Fed policy looked like nearly 30 years ago. But before we look at this mid-90s experience, it's natural to ask, why am I even bothering to talk to you about something that occurred almost three decades ago? Does it really have any relevance for 2024? Well, the reason is quite simple. The Fed has seemingly been united in their recent messaging that monetary policy, aka rate cuts, this year can be, let's put it in quotes, methodical, cautious, patient. But Vice Chair Jefferson recently introduced a new aspect to this discussion when he mentioned the mid-1990s rate-cutting episode, and that might be the best parallel to the current situation. Specifically, that policy easing occurred <clears throat> due to lowering inflation, not economic weakness, otherwise known as the soft landing. So what happened in the mid-1990s? Well, first off, the Fed embarked on an aggressive tightening cycle in 1994-1995. The policymakers raised the Fed funds target 300, base, uh, 300 basis points, with the rate hikes ultimately reaching a peak of 6%. And interestingly, the rate hike intervals themselves somewhat resembled the episode that recently transpired as 25 basis point increases at the start of the 94-95 cycle shifted into higher gears of 50 and then 75 basis point moves. Sound familiar, right? By mid-1995, the Fed then embarked on a rate cut policy. But what we've seen is that the decline in the Fed funds target was not uniform in any fashion. So the first quarter point decrease came in July of that year. But the next quarter point move didn't occur until five months later in December. And then the final rate cut in this easing cycle came in late January 1996, and that was another 25 basis point move, and that took the Fed funds rate down to five and a quarter. So let's sum it up. The 95-96 rate cut episode consisted of only three decreases worth 75 basis points in total. Now, let's come back to the present here. And as we've talked about this over the last few months, the market has finally, at least it appears that way, come to the Fed with respect to rate cut expectations for 2024. In other words, as February came to a close, the implied probabilities for Fed funds futures saw only three rate cuts this year, just like the Fed's latest dot plot. Remember, we came into this year with the market pricing in six rate cuts. Remember that, that number, that number three keeps popping up, doesn't it? You want some further interesting context? Let's look at the 2019 pre-COVID rate cut cycle. And that consisted of only how many rate cuts? Three. And you know when it also began? In July, like in 1995. And, and by the way, this was another non-recession-induced rate cut time frame as well. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be the template for this year, but you have to admit, these are some interesting little monetary policy tidbits. And the bottom line is that any potential rate cuts for 2024 are going to be data dependent. And thus far, the soft landing scenario has been aligning, aligning with what occurred nearly 30 years ago. So does that mean three rate cuts beginning at this year's July FOMC meeting should be a given? Stay tuned. We'll keep up the good work here and, and look out for what's coming down the road. Have a great rest of the week, everybody, and be well.